Alejandro, um, yeah. a warm welcome to you on film, me show me, and congratulations on Utama. It's your feature directorial debut, and not only has it premiered at LFF, but I think it's also repping Bolivia at next year's Oscars. So, I mean, yeah. tell me, what significance does this all have on you, your team, and Bolivian cinema as a whole? Thank you very much. Well, we do feel very proud and with everything that's happening with the film, starting with Sundance uh, Grand Jury Prize. Uh, and that's like a huge, um, yes, happiness we have. Uh, we, you don't expect that. You you know you, you're you trying to do your best. You're trying to tell a, a story in a good way and trying to make a great film, but you never expect what can happen afterwards. So when it all started happening, it was great. And Bolivian people is feeling very proud about the film, which is very important to us as a team, uh, to have people being um, being identified with the film and being happy with the film. Right. Now, talking about Utama, I mean, the decaying environment and its effect on society are very pertinent topics within um you've been within our world today so tell me what impact did these subjects actually have on you and why did you choose this for a feature format well i i i had the enormous the big um opportunity the lovely opportunity to travel all around bolivia bolivia is a very big country uh, with small population and it's a country that has very beautiful places and landscapes and it's very frustrating and very sad and to, to see how it, it's all in danger, it's all in danger to disappear. Uh, and it's, it gives you a, a feeling of impotency, you say, of, mm -hmm. and, and kind of anger and you want to do something about it. Um, so I, I really want to, to do more things about it, not just future films, but also if I was able to do short messages um uh, because it's very sad and frustrating to see these beautiful places uh, in danger of disappearing right now when i was watching the film i was absolutely mesmerized by your vision as a filmmaker i mean the dangers of the drought are really neatly juxtaposed with the gorgeous wide shots uh, of the highlands um and your vision, as I said, is, is just truly, it really is incredible. But tell me, which filmmakers are you most inspired by and why? Uh, it's very hard, I feel, because I'm not a very, I'm not a particularly memory person <laughs> and reference <laughs> person. I think I have a whole thing in my head. Uh, I There's a lot of filmmakers I like and I love, but I feel they are not that related with the film. <laughs> it's strange. But for instance, I like um, Kieslowski a lot. Uh, I like Kaurismaki a lot. Um, I also like Wim Wenders. Uh, I like the Coen brothers. I love the Coen brothers. I love David Lynch. Um, Billy Wilder. <laughs> Mm -hmm. of, yeah, I, I would say those are my favorites. And of course, I also like Scorsese and Kubrick. Uh, but for this particular film, I did use some films as to work as references. Uh, the Woman in the Dunes. It's a Japanese oh, yeah. film. Yeah. Uh, uh, Paris, Texas. Uh, Drifting Clouds from Kaurismaki. And I use them in many different ways. Uh, also, Ida from Pavel Pavlikovsky. Um, so I would say those are the main uh, filmmakers that have inspired me. Right. And I also thought there was a very interesting Western feel to the film as well. So yeah. it's interesting you mentioned Cohen Brothers because I think they've also had that attempt at sort of creating Western. So was that ever a reference point for you as well? Western movies in particular? Yes, I feel that the film shares one one thing in particular with westerns is in, is the fight against nature. In west in westerns, it's like the conquer of nature, the conquer of a new wild west. And in this case, is resisting the place you you have always known and the place you belong to. But it's also a fight against uh, a desert that's growing and growing. 
so I feel that that's the main um, relation with Westerns. And of course, Westerns have a very particular way of portraying the desert and the sun and uh, resisting this, uh, this climate. So I feel yeah, indirectly there was some references from Westerns. Sergio mm -hmm. Leone. Of course, yeah. right. And again, it's it's admirable how you've chosen non-professional actors. Also, um, you shot in extreme weather conditions as well. And I heard there was like herds of llamas as well <laughs> each time you were shooting. So tell me, how did you overcome some of those physical and emotional challenges? I feel that the emotional challenges are way difficult to, way more difficult to face than the technical challenges. Uh, it's very difficult to to be hundred percent in a good place for a film, uh, physically and emotionally. Uh, and during that period, I faced a lot of mm, pers. Yeah, it was not an easy time for emotions, so it was very difficult to to face them. Uh, and I feel that the technical, and I feel all of that was uh, backed by my brother, who's a producer. I feel that he was a very strong uh, place where I could always be and I'll always be comfortable. So he helped me a lot in this moment. Uh, and I feel that the team helped me uh, to, to, to achieve all the, to, to beat all the technical challenges. Being in this place, very hostile place, environmentally talking. Uh, but we had a very nice group and we were all having fun. It was uh, very, we, we knew we were achieving some nice images, some nice days, some nice shooting. So we were always all happy and the actors definitely bring a lot of, brought a lot of joy to the shooting. They are wonderful people, uh, beautiful people. So I feel that the human part helped me to to overcome these challenges. And I think being a photographer, you really seem to have the knack of expressing strongly through imagery rather than words. Uh, so how and where do you feel that ability to express through visuals has developed from? Um, I, I was at first a photographer. So I started my artistic career as a photographer. Uh, and I did, and then I learned to do direction of photography. And I feel that those Working in those fields helped me a lot to to know how I wanted the film to look visually like. Uh, mm -hmm. Yes, and I feel it was more difficult to to know how it was in terms of other way other aspects of directing. I was more afraid of how I would perform as a acting director or as a um, yes acting especially. But I feel I overcome it in a overcome it in a good way. Mm -hmm. Right now, as an Indian, um, you know, Alejandro, I seem to relate with Bolivian cinema because mm -hmm. I mean, I mean, I mean, Utama is my first film that I've seen that's from Bolivia. But I've heard a lot that the fact that the films uh, from your country actually revolve around the themes of political oppression and sort of highlights the country's indigenous cultures as well. Uh, which to, which is something I also very relate with. So how effective do you feel uh, Bolivian cinema has been in addressing the topics of polit uh, political oppression and the indigenous cultures? How effective do you think it's been or as an art form to address such things? I think it affects me in a direct way. Um, I feel that, as you said, Bolivia cinema is always... Um, we have this huge problem with, not problem, questions about our identity. We have many cultures in our country, mm -hmm. different cultures, which is a great thing and it's a, a rich thing. We are a rich country in that way. We have many cultures, many languages, but it's difficult to have uh, an identity. You don't feel like you're a Bolivian, but from where, from this part or this other part? Or, <laughs> and how is it that you are related with that part? So. I feel we all have these questions in our head and we are always looking for to understand our identity because we have uh, migrations, huge waves of migrations from Europe, huge wage, uh, waves of migration from internal Bolivia, from one part and another, many languages, many cultures. 
And we are also a very um, a, a, a country that is always in a political crisis. Uh, we are always struggling with politicians. We are always struggling with uh, politics. And I feel that also that influenced a lot of Bolivian artists. Um, it's impossible for me as an artist, you always have to be questioning power and you have to be always questioning society and trying to uh, portrait it in a way that people can see a mirror in films to their lives and then question, make themselves bigger questions about society. So I feel we have this power as uh, filmmakers uh, and this responsibility as well. So you have to be very careful of how, how you do it. Very rightly said. And I mean, I'm not sure about uh, Bolivia's history, but I'm sure um, in, in India, we obviously have mm -hmm. suffered a lot from imperialism from different forces uh, over the years. Um, and I think that the checkered past has really had uh, a bit of a, a, an effect on the mindsets that's there uh, of people in our community at the same time as well. Do you also feel that, I mean, I don't know what Bolivia's past is like, but the historically, do you think the, the past of that maybe that Bolivia's had has had an impact on the way uh, people operate and the way films and stories are told as well? Definitely, because we don't have a... We haven't overcome past. We're always looking back to past and we have many problems unresolved. We are a country that has been colonized uh, and we are not in peace with that. We haven't embraced it. Uh, and it's not easy to embrace it. It's not easy to say to just, uh, there's people that has been able to forgive. There's people that has not been able to forgive. Uh, and I feel we have this, this struggle in between because we know many of us have Spanish blood in uh, in our veins, but we also have indigenous blood, and it's difficult to to just be in peace with that. And it's difficult to say we we don't have a glory past, so we can be. Uh, um, but I feel that that's a, a wrong way to see things because we do have uh, many things that are great in our country. We have been living in peace for 500 years with no, with just one small civil war. Uh, and we're many different cultures and we have not committed any genocide. Uh, we have been living together in peace. So that that is a glorious past, but you, we were never an empire. We were never a rich country. And I feel people always tend to see the bad things and not these other good things. True. Uh, and it's not easy. Of course, it's not easy, but, but I feel we have to, overcome the past and see the future and embrace the cultures we have and embrace the past we have. Um, and I hope that, yeah, I feel, yeah, it's not an easy thing, but I hope in the coming years we are able to do it. Right. Now, often when, uh, in especially in India, when we talk about a film going to the Oscars and, you know, it's obviously such a huge talk because, um, you know, because of the level of uh, validation that the award seems to have gotten over the years. But people often forget that it's not the be all and end all of your craft or your excellence as a filmmaker. But, you know, I've always questioned why films from my country have never actually won an Oscar. Um, I think for Bolivia, I don't think it, you've not even had nominations at all, have you? This is the first, I mean, this, I mean, this is also a submitted film, but why do you feel uh, that this is the case and how do you think perhaps utama can maybe be a game changer uh, in terms of in terms of that as well well the thing with cinema is that is it also reflects the um, the power you have economically speaking as a country and we don't have any power so we are a very poor country and we don't have uh, we don't have any governmental support for cinema and we don't have a strong industry either it's a very small industry. We are able to make, uh, let's say, five films a year, something like that. Um, so I feel it's strictly related in one way. And um, I hope, I mean, we never had a nomination, but as you said, it is, of, of course, a great validation and it, it is a great thing. But it's not, I feel also that um, there's other ways of validating a film. If you're successful in your country, if many people see it, if you're able to bring a small change in society, it's also a successful uh, mm -hmm. 
if you're able to touch, uh, let's say, 1,000 hearts, it's enough because these 1,000 hearts then, then can go go on and change other 1,000 hearts and other 1,000 hearts and it's... Uh, so it's a... It, the cinema is a, a changing tool. Uh, it's an mm -hmm. age of change. So I feel that if your film is able to do that, it's already successful. Right, absolutely. On a final note, um, Alejandro, since the pandemic, uh, international cinema seems to have united as one en entity now because of OTT platforms like Netflix and Amazon. You know, it all seems to have sort of become one melting pot of entertainment. Um, and the West now are trying really keenly to support you know, world cinema generally, as we can see as well. So how would you describe uh, being a filmmaker post the pandemic? And how confident are you if in the future you are to make um, Bolivian stories in the West? How confident are you of making sure that, accurate, that there's accurate representation too? Well, I feel that um, the, the world, cinematically speaking, in the, cinematic, cinema, well, in the cinema industry, it's changing <laughs> in a good way. Uh, we have realized that we need stories from all over the world and people is fighting to to, to achieve that. Uh, it's been happening with festivals since a long time, uh, but I feel that now the industry has also taken a serious look at it and said we need stories from all over the world. And I hope that um, this is a change that will happen. Uh, and I feel that you... Mm, how to stay faithful I feel it's just you have to stay faithful to yourself as an as, as an artist and as what you want to say if you lose that then you're lost in the in the industry or in whatever you're doing and you won't have a voice of yourself anymore uh, so I feel it's a matter of perspective you have to keep the perspective you have to to keep in mind what things really matter. This is something that my father taught me. He's a filmmaker as well. And he told me something. He said to me, don't ever take yourself too serious and mm. just remind, remind yourself that you're just making a film. Yeah. You're not stopping wars. You're not healing cancer. You're just making a film. It has a big importance, but it's just a film. So keep the perspective. And, and, and I feel... Um, something that you have to be happy with what you're doing if you're not you, you should stop it so I feel that keeping a nice perspective is a way of keep, keeping be keeping the happiness in the way absolutely no Alejandro it's been such a pleasure and I'm really looking forward to um, seeing more great work from you in fact actually do, what, what's next for you actually after Utama <laughs> I am working on a couple of projects uh, some very interesting things. Uh, I can't say much for now. I mean, I have, because I have three different projects and I, I don't feel comfortable when one says, speaks about one project. And, mm. but they are set in Bolivia. Uh, oh, great. They are set in Bolivia. Uh, one of them still, I feel all of them still talk about the environment and also culture and losing culture and these identity problems or questions more than problems uh, so i i'm gonna keep on exploring my big rich country <laughs> wonderful well so you should i mean you know honestly bolivia does have a very rich cinema history as well and i think it's so wonderful alejandro to see you make your uh feature film directorial debut in that sense with utama uh it's a very special film and i wish you all the very best and the entire team all the very best and congratulations for such a great achievement once again thank you thank you very much and very very nice to meet you Anush.